Okay. Consider an object on which the resultant force is constantly changing with time, like this. Or maybe, as shown in this graph, the force increases and then it decreases. Or even in a more complex way like this, where it's changing in a non-linear fashion. In this case, we can't really use SUVAS because the acceleration isn't constant. So we use something called impulse. Impulse comes from this equation, just rearranging it. Force times change in time equals change in momentum. So impulse just means change in momentum. Literally the same thing. You can get it in two ways. You can do force times change in time, or you can just do final momentum minus the initial momentum. Okay, so why is impulse useful? Consider this graph where the force is changing over time, and I'm interested in what happens with the momentum between T1 and T2. If I take a tiny strip over here, if I do the force at this point, times by the width of that, the change in time, that actually gives me this area. And force times time, as you know, is equal to the change in momentum or the impulse. So in other words, if I work out the area of this whole section between T1 and T2, I can work out the change in momentum between those two points. So this is why it's useful. The area under a force time graph is the change in momentum. Okay, the diagram shows how the force on a trolley changes with time. The mass of the trolley is 500 kilograms and its initial velocity was 1.5 meters per second. Calculate the final velocity of the trolley. Okay, so firstly, we're going to use this graph to work out the impulse. So to do that, we're going to work out the area of the graph. So if I split this into two sections, I've got a triangle here. So we can do 100, which is the height, times 20 divided by 2 because it's a triangle. So you divide that by 2. And exactly the same here, actually. So it's 100 times 20 divided by 2. If you add that together, you get 2,000 Newton seconds. So my impulse is 2,000 Newton seconds from the area under the graph there. My mass is 500. My final velocity, I don't know that yet. I've got 500 here. And my initial velocity was 1.5. Okay, so rearranging this. Divided by 500, we get a final velocity of 5.5 meters per second. Okay, determine the change in momentum from the graph. In other words, again, we just work out the impulse, which is the area under this graph. So, firstly, I'm going to start off by figuring out what each of those squares is equal to. So, each square is 50 newton by uh, 1 millisecond. So, note this is in milliseconds. So, 50 times 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3 gives me 5.0 uh, times 10 to the minus 2 newton seconds. Now, I'm going to count the number of squares. So, 1, 2, three, four, five whole squares. And then I'm going to add up the others to see what I can get. Okay, so if I maybe add, this could be six here. If I join these two with this tiny piece here, and then what can I have this as seven, these two joint together can be seven. And then maybe these two joint here could add up to eight. And then roughly half here, so around 8.5. Uh, so 8.5 blocks, and each one is five times to the minus two Newton seconds. So the total change in momentum, if you multiply it together, you get 0 0.425 newton seconds. Okay, finally, in this example here, a ball of mass 0 0.3 kilogram bounces elastically with the wall. Calculate the change in momentum. So it's initially moving at 5 meters per second towards the right, and then it bounces off elastically, meaning its kinetic energy is being conserved, so it's coming back at 5 meters per second. A common mistake here is to think that the change in momentum is zero, because it looks like a speed hasn't changed, but of course, its velocity has changed, its direction has changed. So we really need to use this formula very carefully. So final momentum minus initial momentum. So final momentum is mass 0 0.3 times minus 5. Because it's going towards the left, I'm going to define left as negative. Minus initial momentum, which is 0 0.3, the mass, times positive 5, because it's going towards the right. So that gives me a total change of minus 3.0 kilogram meters per second, or I can use Newton seconds as a unit if I wanted.